Hi, everybody. Well, I'm Ryan Rex Rex, and I'm here today with See You Next Tuesday. I'm here today with Chris, Drew, and Jimmy. Uh, how you guys doing today? Excellent. Super duper. Swell. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a that's an eclectic choice of words there. Um, I'm I think that's appropriate for an eclectic genre band with such as yourself. It's awesome to have you guys here today. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedules and on a Tuesday, no less. Yeah, no problem, man. Thanks for having us. See yeah, thanks for having good. us for sure. Thanks for oh, yeah. giving a shit about us too. That's that's always pleasant. You know, yeah. that's it's it's a it's a rare commodity today when people just give a shit about music. It's uh. Actually, it is frightening uh, how few people do. But uh, <laughs> I think to give some uh, backstory here on how this came to be, I believe I've been tagging you guys in little band polls for like quite a long time. Uh, I used to do them on the Demo Team podcast, and now I just do them on my own page. And yeah, I have to say, uh, first and foremost, you guys have like some of the best attitude of band dudes out there. It doesn't matter what poll you're on. You can be on there with Fall Out Boy. You guys are just like, your team players, you're just there to. Like, hey, our fans are here listening. What's up? It's funny too because we always get a handful of people that see my comment and will will comment on that. You're gonna be like, "What the fuck? See you next Tuesday." <laughs> yeah. We're just chilling, dude. We're just like, hey, he's doing something. Yeah, yeah, it's fun, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Epic. So I guess if we're gonna do this interview, we should probably do it right. How does okay. See You Next Tuesday become a thing? How did you all come together to create this monstrosity of awesomeness? Well, they uh, didn't. Those yeah. two right here and here. They, they weren't there for that, unfortunately. He's a liar. I started the band in my mom's <laughs> basement in <laughs> Orlando in 1999 when I heard Job for a Cowboys, the Dillinger Escape Plan. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that seems I love factual. that JFAX song. That's <laughs> it's relatively factual. Um, it was a garage, not a basement, and it was Rick's mom's, not my mom's. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, Rick couldn't be here, but he was one of the earliest members of the band. He was he was around for the conception. But he didn't join the band till after like a full year of the band being around. We basically like we're like we want a tour, <clears throat> and the the bass player we had the for our first player Adam Payne just couldn't do it. So anyway, the question was how did we start? Uh, I don't know. Like I, it's a funny story is uh, I was a bass player before this band. Um, every band I was in from like. 14 to like 22 i played bass in it was like four or five different bands so i was actually kind of known around my little small town of nowhere michigan as a bass player and then i randomly started playing guitar uh right around the time i discovered bands like uh dillinger escape plan you know that jfax song um you know bands like coalesce converge um so like my musical taste was like shifting and playing guitar and stuff and honestly like you know the band the name was just kind of like a funny and obviously you know haha vagina jokes you know but uh i don't know it's kind of funny now that it's like a more popular phrase how it's like you know after all these years we're still the band called see you next tuesday so it's still kind of ironic to me um very right. Yeah, that was basically it, man. I picked up guitar, started playing guitar. I uh, Andy was our first drummer. He was a guitar player that was interested in playing drums. So he switched there and we just decided to play musical chairs in the very beginning and relearn everything. And we wrote a bunch of stupid songs that were just like uh, metal core with breakdowns. Um, obviously, the, the Wax Vessel release that we did back in 2020. Uh, those were like some of our more uh, pre you next Tuesday releases. Um, but anyway, yeah, uh, I guess fast forward, you know, six, eight months or so, we started writing. Well, we I wrote us that uh, Here Take This Pill and then uh, Eight Dead and Portable all within like a summer span. 
and then we recorded those and put out that little ep the the summer sampler and that's when like people were like oh this band's doing something different kind of thing and yeah that was basically it man it was just a bunch of dudes wanted to start some start making music and honestly like we didn't know what we're doing when we got into it we started as a joke and we're just making music to mosh to and even though i didn't even mosh like it was just what people you know what i mean like that's if you wanted to play a show you had to have a breakdown i guess in 2004 when we first started yeah. <laughs> especially in small town america i mean it is it kind of makes sense i mean you guys kind of rose through like the age of uh i mean myspace was kind of just becoming a thing where it was viable for bands to like kind of market and advertise on it it was kind of like the the training ground for social media today and the kind of like the how to advertise your band and reach as many people as possible but a lot of it was just kind of having that like grassroots movement and just kind of like spreading word of mouth which i think because myspace didn't have an algorithm that you know it was a little easier probably back then i don't know Mm -hmm. how would you compare today's atmosphere of uh internet promoting band to the old glory days of myspace oh man (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, I think it's easier I, on Instagram versus like Facebook, honestly. Yeah, but at the same time, now there's so many because like the ability to make a video and to record to record music specifically is so easy. And you can program drums. Like there's so many bands out there that are like one or two dudes that don't have a drummer and they just program stuff and they put up banger at records from their bedrooms so it's like you're competing with a lot more stuff um i will say that the the fact that myspace had the built-in uh player you know obviously now it's video um so you know people are more focused on that and that's another unfortunate part too i think about now is if you don't have something visually stimulating that no one cares whereas myspace was um surrounding just audio you know so i think that's probably the biggest difference is just the oversaturation now of people being able to put out decent recording decent enough to put it online and have people give a shit about it um and yeah just the fact that it's 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 a video and audio field now like i i think i don't know i could be totally wrong (laughs) no people get stuck in reels a lot you know and oh dude ever since you created the yeah, and ever since Drew created a TikTok for us, honestly, it's, it's you know, he he said, like, we're getting a lot of views on our TikTok and a lot of people following us. I thought that was pretty cool. And Drew's put together a bunch of cool reels and stuff, like, from, like, like he was talking about, like, videos and things like that. Like, Drew's done a ton of playthrough videos of, like, some of the new songs, some of the old songs. And, like, people are interested in seeing that type of stuff and Drew has like a goofy background, like in every video. So it's like, it's funny <laughs> to watch, but it's also, oh, cool. This is how I can actually see this dude, what he's playing and stuff like yeah. that. So it's like, like, I, I love watching drum videos. Like Drew sends me tons of them all the time. So it's like, yeah, that is really cool. Um, Rick from uh, good fight. Uh, who's been part of the ferret family forever. Um, he's always been like kind of a, uh, uh, a mentor to us you know like he's always loved our band and always uh filled us in and educated us when he can but uh he did say that you know it's it's um because of the video stuff and all that you know bands can get away with selling records still and not have to tour like we did back in 2000 you know seven and 2008 because you know when we put parasite out fox we were gone the what 2007 nine months or t- <laughs> i would say 10 months that year yeah nine it was ridiculous half, months, yeah and that's gas that's food that's plane tickets that's you know that's trying to transportation yeah. and then kind of nowadays you put a video out and like hey maybe i should go get a copy of that and you didn't have to move <laughs> yeah exactly exactly <laughs> So the dynamic has changed uh totally you know i don't I, it's it's hard to say which one was better you know, I like being able to sit at home. 
I mean, I, I, I'm glad I don't have to be like posting bulletins anymore. Pick comment for pick comment. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm appreciative <laughs> of that. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Yeah. Podcast didn't exist really back then. And again, I mean, the, uh, the technology of being able to have all of us on zoom and stuff like, you know, this, the ability to just plug into our phones and have a four-way video call that you can record is not something that existed back then either. It's crazy to think about. And if, yeah, it, and if you did do it, it was potato quality and everybody was like eight pixels like each. Right. <laughs> yep. Man. It's you know, such a weird my old sidekick was pretty sick. <laughs> no, yeah. Those, <laughs> if if those were next level. To borrow it. <laughs> I don't know why we got a razor like reboot. Like they try to bring the razor back. I, right, I get yeah. it for phones. I cool, whatever. thought about buying back... one because I fucking hate being on my phone. So I was like, yeah. oh, <laughs> let's get this thing and I'll be detached from my phone from now on. But... It's a great reminder yeah, of what we have. <laughs> Everybody wanted That's to so check funny. their MySpace on Fox's razor or his uh, sidekick. <laughs> my sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, sidekicks were like ahead of their time and then the iphone came out so i skipped that the sidekick i was like i don't want to do it yeah, you I, went, want to I remember when that iphone came out and we had to wait at the apple store for you to get one yeah i was dying like i was just like i need technology but every you know everything pointed at that phone being like the perfect thing for me but and i mean it was so ahead of its time it was so it's so crazy to remember that thing first coming out <laughs> yeah I remember. I assume you're a similar age as us, right, Ryan? I am 35, so I, I 35. I oh, you're a little, you're a little I'm younger than us. some of us. Yeah, I'm a Not little bit of a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Just a yeah, little. you're right there with. Yeah, I'm 41 I, I, myself. I was, your, I was your target demographic when you know 2004 was around. So, yeah. <laughs> hey, you're welcome. <laughs> thank you it's great music man like and i i, I too remember myspace and i just uh i do recall i have i i I'm, you gotta have a see you next tuesday as your song you know your profile song yeah. oh yeah <laughs> you try to thank do that you. nowadays with facebook like the profile song and like you were talking like is all these things surrounding it but i think having a good profile song was uh very appropriate back in the day oh my yeah. god it was it meant everything that in the top eight battles Oh my god. People will get Why so are I in your top eight? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I like... there... <laughs> go ahead. I was gonna say I I hope there was no squabbles over the see you next Tuesday top eight. Like, dude, well, we just went on tour. What happened? I thought I was in there. <laughs> <laughs> then you could like jail I uh... was like despised icon and I think we used to change it for like whoever we were on tour with at the time. Yeah, we tried to do that when we first started before we like had real tours and stuff when, uh, you know, it was weird, basically promoting the summer sampler. We used to do like top eight uh, exchange with other bands. That's how that was actually my first experience talking to Tony Dan's tap dance extravaganza. I remember commenting on their their page and being like, hey. You guys get a lot of plays and we're getting a lot of plays. Let's put each other in the top eight. I'm trying to like start a promotion type of thing. Um, and Despised Icon was another band that was like right there in the beginning. Uh, number 12 looks like window. you from a second story window. Yeah. So like we were just like, this is before we were on Ferret. So this is like, I think Fox is right when. I think I just hung up. No, you're here. No, you're here. Oh, oh, I just hung up on my earbuds. Do I sound terrible? You sound like not you're... as crisp and clear. Okay, let me see if I can get these back on. I screwed up. Please stand by. <laughs> I was really curious what I was right about. A lot. <laughs> Yo, is that oh a fight God, like geese shirt? Playing. Why is music playing? Yeah, fights like geese. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we will return to your regularly scheduled uh, top eight MySpace lore in a moment, folks. Sorry, what was I right about? What was I right about? Can you I hear me? Yeah, no. I can hear you. 
It's not through these again, though. Whatever. I guess we don't get those. Um, I was saying that when we started touring, um, uh, we were putting bands like who we were on tour with in our top eight, stuff like that. But it was an early on type of thing where I would just reach out to random bands and stuff and be like, yeah, you guys are cool. You want to? Yeah, the Heartland. Hey, that's right. We did that. That's kind of cool. That's like guerrilla marketing from back in the day. It's like we both get kind of like this organic reach traffic to our pages for people on our music. Let's kind of like trade that energy. That's good camaraderie right there. If you don't, yeah, I don't know. If, they don't have something like that nowadays. I don't think it's like, yeah, I'll share my story to your story. And it's like, okay, but top eight yeah, forever, I'm... man. Yeah. <laughs> for the week. Obviously, for, forever. <laughs> forever. I mean, technically, well, you guys probably, probably still have still a there. MySpace up, yeah. and there's a top eight that's still there. That's the last top eight that was ever put together. It's probably just Tom eight times. <laughs> 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 but I want to say at one point we switched it to him. <laughs> like, you know, right around the death of Did MySpace. Did MySpace, like, sponsor one of our tours, dude? I don't think so. I think they did. I think we were on a MySpace tour. Like MySpace records, like something. I I don't know. I'm going to have to look at my tour passes. I'm pretty sure we were on a MySpace sponsored tour. You guys were definitely, wasn't it uh, Lamgo that sponsored one? Yeah, or no, they didn't there. sponsor it. It was just called the Van Flip Tour or something. Oh, like yeah, that. yeah, because we're just poking fun. I mean, it was Arsonist, Get All the Girls, and us. We were both, like, fucking clickbait central for uh, my lamb goat commenters. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, um, tro- that's trolling back in the day. You know, they were finding mm-hmm. ways of getting those people to clickbait out of rage. Right. Yeah. I found our top eight. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. All right, are you ready? Yeah. Let's do it. All right. First one is Prestige Michigan Wide. Oh, hey, that uh, after the band broke up, I started uh, a like a show company and was doing uh, local shows. Tried uh, to get some touring bands up here in Bay City. How'd that go? Flesh and Blood Robot. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> um from hell. Oh, sick. Um, the movie? Sick. Changeling? <laughs> oh, sweet. Uh, uh, Cooter's old band. Yeah, they have a new drummer, apparently. <laughs> Not sure when that's from. Uh, <laughs> fight It Out. Okay, yeah. Uh, yep. Good Teeth, Gold Teeth. Yeah, Gary's band. Yep. Yep. Punch It. And the last one is This or the Apocalypse. Oh, (laughs) that's funny. Yeah. (laughs) It's Ricky. That's awesome. It's like, this was like uh, like a scene band version of going through like hieroglyphics or like artifacts, like (laughs) ancient society. (laughs) Drew, did you know Ricky from This or the Apocalypse is in that Ice Nine Kills band now? Oh, shit. That's funny. Yeah. They're huge. That's That's awesome. That's crazy. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> enough about MySpace. Sorry, <laughs> I had to find out. <laughs> Never. No, it's funny because, like, you know, I mean, obviously, um, you know, we use MySpace as a tool, so we get lumped in as a quote unquote MySpace band, you know, but it's a hard moniker to, to lift 20 years later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't man, know why like... it's like a negative thing, you know, whatever. I wouldn't say so. I I I cherish those times because it was just you know it's kind of like when you watch a uh, um, uh, Little House on the Prairie, kind of just reminds you of simpler times. Jesus, I haven't <laughs> heard that fucking name in a long time. <laughs> Holy fuck! <laughs> makes me think. Makes me think. Um, lost. Last oh, watching Little back. House. <laughs> I remember during the touring days because I didn't really have a place to live and. Um, I, you couldn't like it was streaming wasn't really that big. I remember I had like these ripped copies of uh, lost episodes that had Korean subtitles on the bottom. So when uh, the Korean characters would speak in Korean, 
there would be the English subtitles, but then over top of that were more English subtitles. So I couldn't ever <laughs> read it. <laughs> <laughs> What's it say? <laughs> That has to be horrible because Lost, it's very, like, I need to understand what's going on with the plot. And yeah, right. yeah. I later, later on, I went back and, and, you know, had DVDs like five years later and rewatched them. But that show was great. I, 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 was I will fucking amazing. I, I enjoy yeah. the brain damage that show gave me. I was just like, I'm trying <laughs> to make sense of this and I want it to make sense because I love these characters so much. Dude, that 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 show was one of the few shows that are like I felt rage when I like had to wait for more. You know, I remember like throwing my pillow across the room, like motherfucker, what now? <laughs> oh, especially like when it probably a season ended. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, you know, I got to wait for it to go through the cycle and then download it from some random Korean website. You know, <laughs> <laughs> decipher the freaking subtitles. <laughs> yep. It's amazing. Uh, good times. So, you guys touched briefly on your guys' relationship with Ferret, which was uh, the record label that you guys were signed on for your <laughs> first two albums, correct? Yep. Correct. Awesome. So what was that like? Like having that, because uh, Ferret had some awesome bands on it. So like, how would you, would you guys like talk about your time during uh, being there? Fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> fair ruled man i yeah. fucking love it that's why we're still with those fucking characters now you know because they they are good fight now for the most part so but uh it was fucking awesome man like they took care of us uh i don't think they really knew what to expect having us uh because i don't think we were really like any other band on the label uh but as soon as parasite came out they started paying quite a bit of attention to us like even more so so that and they anything we really wanted to do they were for um they supported us and everything we you know and everything uh if we ever yeah. needed help they helped us um it was it was great they were a fantastic label they got us they got us on killer tours all the time yeah. you know i mean we toured with red core through the eyes of the dead despised icon toured suicide silence when mitch was still alive you know like we did that Cole S daughters tour before Lex got canceled as fuck. Uh, <laughs> you know, a bunch of cool yeah. festivals. We did uh, Europe with uh, Misery Index. You know, I mean, was, hate Eternal. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah so we really. <laughs> yeah, like they fucking. They hooked it up. Yeah, they, they, they definitely took care of us as a band. Like, you know. That's a good sign of a label when you see a, a band that's like starting off, getting on like a bunch of fucking awesome tours. That means their label is actually gives a shit about them. <laughs> yeah, that's... like the first tour I did with the band, which was right out of the studio for Parasite, was Acacia Strain and Job for a Cowboy. And it was fucking insane. Yeah, sold like, out. So <laughs> like, every it was night. fucking nuts, dude. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was like, yeah, oh, is that what I have to look forward to? Okay. <laughs> and. Genesis didn't even come out yet. That was they were. This is their first tour the yeah. of just touring on the Doom EP, dude. It was fucking wild. That's that, <laughs> that yeah, just that sounds was... amazing. <laughs> I mean, it it's kind of refreshing. Crazy. It's refreshing to hear that a label took care of a band because it's it's such yeah. a sad story to hear and so common, unfortunately, especially. Yeah in this kind of like associated genre like you you kind of just hear horror stories bands just getting put through the ringer and, and then you know it's just like they don't even own anything and they just it's like why aren't they a band anymore it's because well now they're in debt and the mere mention of the name cost them 15 dollars <laughs> 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 yeah it, they were great you know plus like yeah. like you said all the other bands that were on the label with us like you know, every time I die, I was on the label then. Poison the Well, which is like one of my favorite bands of all time. Like, I'm pretty sure Parasite and Versions came out the same exact day, which was like a huge thing for me and Travis, our bass player at the time. Uh, like, it, it was fucking insane. It, there were so many amazing bands on Ferret back then. Like Scarlet, yeah, we re recorded with Andreas. Like, yeah, it was fucking nuts. Yeah, Ferret was fucking, they knew what they're doing back then for sure. But, and you know, I mean, they got a reputation for being awesome because they really were like Carl and Rick and Portland, like that team of dudes, 
I mean, if you were on that label, and it's funny too because they're still this way to the de- to this day. They kind of like have that mob, like they're from Jersey. You know what I mean? Like they definitely have that. Like if you say something, they get a little like heated. You know, but like in your defense, <laughs> I'm gonna think of them as mob guys now. <laughs> oh man, it was hey, cool though. Ooh, hey. <laughs> yeah. Hey. No, yeah, I mean it's it's awesome though. I, yeah, I, I mean even now, like you know, it's totally different scale. You know, I mean Ferret doesn't have the roster that, or Good Fight doesn't have the roster that Ferret did, but. You know, it's just kind of like their side gig. You know, Rick and Carl both have their other things and other labels that they work with, and Good Fight's just their their kind of like uh, their fun thing. But even now, like you know, we want them to do something or need some help with something or have a crazy idea for a remix album. They're like, "Fuck it, let's do it." That's the kind of relationship you want to have with like anyone that works with a label. I wouldn't, I don't think anyone wants to work with somebody that's like, mm, nah, shelf that, make some pop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't um, want to be with anybody else, to be honest. Like, they're great. Yeah. We, uh, in our early career, before we signed with Ferret, there were some other, like, not necessarily like no name labels, but some smaller labels and stuff that probably don't even exist now. But we were fortunate enough to have like people like send us a message or like that we knew that was on the label or had dealt with the label, able to to skirt by and not get signed into something stupid. So we we're an independent band when Ferret came knocking, you know, so we we're very fortunate there because a lot of bands that size were like trying to sign with these no name labels back then. Cause MySpace was huge, man. I mean, bands were blown up left and right. So, I mean, even a dude starting his first label could, you know, sell some records. <laughs> yeah. Cause I don't, I mean, some people, you know, didn't live through this time and they don't realize like MySpace music page, it could be on the top of the chart. It would say Britney Spears. And then the next band would be like, Skylet Drive or a set I set my friends on fire. It's like mm-hmm. MySpace yeah. had its own like kind of congregating thing where it's like it doesn't matter if they're signed to a label or if they're just popular here, those names got intermixed and it was kind of just like it was easier for underground artists to kind of like mingle with yeah. Yeah. mainstream pop acts who kind of had that backing to kind of just drag people. And it's just like if your name's like two, three names down, that's pretty beneficial. Right. Yeah, for sure. sure. They don't do yeah, that. I no remember- more. <laughs> I remember seeing a lot of random bands. I remember seeing like one time I saw like Fear Before the March of Flames in like the top fifty, just randomly. <laughs> Back then it was crazy. Yeah, you're right. That they also had like I think one thing that was cool about it was, uh, and I think this is probably how I found you guys was the genres. They had lists for genres, and I believe you know. They, I, I don't I want to I don't want to say MySpace created all these genres or they kind of they gave people like a little more free reign to like kind of just name genres, whatever. But you just had everybody from like all walks of life having like jazz fusion and, and fucking <laughs> reggae and like power mm-hmm. violence. And it was just like it kind of just created this like big mixing pot. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yep. And I don't think you, you could like because you could like. I like under your name you could put like up to three genres of like what you sounded like yeah oh shit i forgot about that i remember that yeah i just remembered that we're we're accessing (laughs) core memories here (laughs) oh man look at all that dust (laughs) (laughs) but i think genre is an interesting an interesting uh area for you guys because i think nowadays there's a genre name for basically every type of like twangy metal breakdown um i think common ones associated with you guys would probably be like grindcore deathcore mathcore what would you guys consider yourselves as and i'm sure anyone who's a fan is probably aware probably more of a power (laughs) slop (laughs) power slop power Power slop power slop yeah that's what we're going with Bung the world's Dungus greatest core. power slot man. No, Drew, what did you coin the term? <laughs> Not, Not your, your average, average grindcore. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, 
That's that the works. best I can say. I, I mean, like, we're, we we definitely, you know, we mix a lot of stuff. I, I listen to a lot of music. Every single person in this band listens to different music. And, yeah, I mean, we got short songs and a lot of blast beats, so call it what you will. <laughs> yeah, I, I personally, even, like, back then, I hated, like, like categorizing music, like, besides, like, the the typical like just like metal you know or like heavy music uh like i i always hated calling us like i mean we're probably more grind than anything but like i hated calling us grind i hated calling us like when people call us like deathcore i fucking hated it or metalcore <laughs> it's just like extreme music you know like that's kind of how i always looked at it Especially That's back in I, MySpace yeah. times, because I don't think MathCore was really thrown around a lot. No, um, it, it was not a circulated term. I, I remember, because like, even Metalcore wasn't like circulated that much back then. It was like Metallic Hardcore. Or <laughs> melodic yeah, Hardcore. Right, yeah. yeah, Melodic yeah, Hardcore, like, I heard, used to hear a lot, yeah. I remember, I remember people would call like early Converge Metalcore. Like that's metal with hardcore. Metalcore. Yeah. And if you called like misery single signals metalcore, you got fucking castrated because that's metallic hardcore. <laughs> genre genre debates like, well, I get like you know if you're at the record store and if you want to find your favorite record, I'm gonna go look in that section. But two grown men arguing about it on a forum <laughs> on the internet at three a.m. I think maybe you're taking it a little too seriously. But I mean, I get it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean it is what it is. I mean we've been we've been castrated for being called saying that we're grind, you know. Um, we've been <laughs> called shitty. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, Posers. That's Posers also sure. A genre, sure. I think no, my I favorite know, is false when grind. people say false grind. Yeah, I was gonna say that's my favorite. False grind. It's just like. Well, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like you're not Cause true. Right, because it's a recent one for us. <laughs> can't, can't have breakdowns. It's uh, written in the Bible of grindcore. I thought you know. Yeah. Right, which <laughs> doesn't make any sense to me if you really break it down. Metal core. If we really break down. Metal with breakdowns. Death core. Death metal with breakdowns. Grindcore can't have breakdowns. <laughs> <laughs> that's where the line is drawn in the sand you 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 the point of no return just put some pig squeals and a little riff there it's you like, go that's it's it. like those random words that have like different pronunciations or like more than one meaning you know what i mean like it says core it says grind core but if you put a breakdown in it it's not grind core you know <laughs> it's like it's one of those weird english words or something you know <laughs> it's the antonym of a synonym there you go <laughs> you can thank you can thank Mick Harris from Napalm Death for coining the term grindcore. He did it. Thanks, buddy. Now there's, like a, it. now there's like a there's like a TikTok version of grindcore that's like like watered down grindcore. They call it mince core, like to mince. <laughs> Classy stuff. I I just. I, I I'm fascinated with just the terms that they come up with because I've I've heard many, you know, you got power violence, you got uh white belt, um <laughs> like Steam sass core, core. Sass core is crab, crab core. <laughs> crab if there's core a white great. belt, if there's white belt, is there like studded belt too? I want to know now. I think that's just Scott. <laughs> well, I guess Scott. Scott would be checkered. <laughs> checkered core. <laughs> The what is debate. uh what does health call themselves like cum metal or something like that <laughs> i fucking hope so <laughs> no that's real that's amazing <laughs> that's great come come metal i'm just i'm about it <laughs> awesome yeah i can't go that, a day uh, without it that dude is fucking hilarious man i don't even know his name I watched some of his, uh, he does all these videos on TikTok. They're fucking hilarious. Like he, uh, he started, a uh, like a discord 
for people to uh, find friends to go to the show with. So he did this video and it was all like a, a public service announcement. Like, if you want to go to a health show and you don't have anyone to go to, come to this Discord and find a friend. <laughs> It's actually Let's pretty go. awesome. That's really yeah. smart. Oh. <laughs> I went from liking that band to loving that band, though. <laughs> Please support Come Metal. Hell yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think the term was first given to Sleep Token. Aren't they like the founders of Come Metal? <laughs> I think that they've been lumped in with the, the Spirit Box Bad Omens, uh, Batty Core. I think that's the term. That's going like, for them. Is that, is that B H A D D I E core? I think it. I don't think it's that, but I'm sure that <laughs> that's uh like gent. You know, I'm sure there's a, a certain sect of bands that are going to adopt that, and like we put an H in there, it's different. You know, because it's not right. like them. Yeah, it's not the not that silent fucking J. Get that shit out of here. <laughs> <laughs> is Sleep Token that band where that dude farted in the crowd like super loud and everyone heard? Yes. It? Oh, okay. What? <laughs> yeah, there's some video online where like they're playing like this really soft part, and some dude ripped ass so hard, and everybody heard it. And it was someone <laughs> captured it on a phone. It was like, yeah, I watched the video. It's in Australia, <laughs> and like they had a part where it was just total silence, and there's like this footage of a guy with a, a phone, and like. Probably hundred people <laughs> away. You hear? Oh. <laughs> That's amazing. Right before uh, the breakdown, too. Yep. <laughs> As like the black. <laughs> you, you don't. You You don't need a China symbol no more. You just rip ass. You know. <laughs> oh yeah, you go, Jimmy. You need to do that on this know. on this tour coming up, Fox. It's <laughs> fucking rip ass. <laughs> no, let let Rick do it. Yeah, there you go. Rip it would work. So you guys Fun are talking dungeon. about a upcoming tour. Would you guys Ooh. like to talk about that and shout out where you guys are going and who you're going with? Uh yeah. Um yeah, we're doing our first big tour and not even that big, but you know, big for us old men. Uh we're hitting <laughs> the road for <laughs> what's that? Yeah, more than just a long weekend for sure. Uh, yeah, it all started. Um, we're playing this festival down in Houston, Texas on April 27th. And uh, the band Thumbscrews playing, which is going to be fucking awesome to see them. Um, yeah. God Awful Truth is on the show. Uh, a bunch of other locals. And then we're on tour with uh, Mouth Breather. So uh, that kind of like started it and we're like, all right, we got to get to Texas. So we decided to do this kind of like teardrop. We're doing uh, down to Texas, over to Florida and back up. So we're hitting, uh, we start uh, April 19th in Detroit, hit Pittsburgh, Louisville. Um, then we come Memphis. down to Memphis. Yep. Then Little Rock, then Dallas, down to San Antonio, Corpus, Houston, and we drive over to Tampa, um, West, West Palm. Palm, up to Orlando, Atlanta, um, then Nashville, and we're ending in Indianapolis at the Black Circle. So yeah, uh, Mouth Breathers on the tour with us, and then we kind of have some regional friends. Um, actually, Mouth Breather did uh, their one of them is in a wedding. So they had to hop on the third show. So the first couple shows, we got uh, Mutilatred from uh, Toledo. Super fucking sick death metal band. So good. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> and then uh, Mouth Breather jumps on with us in Little Rock and Mutilatred's on, uh, or no, Memphis. They jump on with Memf Memphis and Mutilatred's on that show too, which will be sick. And then... Um, Mouth breather sticks on with us. We get into Texas and noisy neighbors from San Antonio jumps on and they're like uh DB grindcore type stuff. Real fucking awesome dudes. Um, do the Texas dates with them. And then we hop over to Florida and the uh, implosive discordance. Yeah. I'm so excited for implosive discordance. Like I've been listening to them for fucking so long. <laughs> Forever. Yeah, dude. dude. So long. 
And uh, it's like them and Waking the Cadaver were like the first like slam bands. <laughs> um, yeah. that's not true, but anyway, uh, yeah, and then, <laughs> uh, and then also in Florida, Thin jumps on, and uh, mm-hmm. Implosive just does Florida with us, but then uh, Thin will carry out the rest of the tour with us as well. So Mouth Breather, us, and Thin for the last half. So yeah, Florida gets the fucking treatment, man. They get implosive, thin, mouth breather, and us on three whole shows. So that's gonna be fucking awesome. Yeah. And we're playing the Orpheum in Tampa. Remember that place? Oh in shit. E- in, in Ebor City. I didn't realize that. Fuck. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we're playing the outside venue too, which is gonna be fucking awesome. Hell yeah. Sick. Oh sick. Um yeah, we played there this... uh on the uh Acacia job for a cowboy tour. Mm-hmm. Sick. When does this tour begin? So people who are eagerly watching can hurry up and go grab their tickets. <laughs> yeah. Um, on April April 19th. We wanted to do our tour kickoff on 420, but fucking every venue in Michigan is booked up. Like it's And they're like by like Twisted and ICP and stuff. So <laughs> I was going to say, I thought that's who it was because you were like, damn it. <laughs> well, 100%, 100%. The place we're playing, the Pike Room, um is booked by twisted on 420 so that was why we had to back it up a date um so we're playing 420 in pittsburgh the next day which they're medical so i'll allow it you know (laughs) it'll be all right it'll work Um, but yeah and if anyone wants tickets we got a link tree um it's slash cvnt live i did the v so it didn't get fucking canceled by algorithms (laughs) so it's (laughs) Just to uh, piss me off. <laughs> Linktree slash uh, C V N T L I V E. So cunt live. Go get them tickets, man. Catch them. It's gonna be a sick tour, yeah. dude. Like, yeah, dude. That um, Thumbscrew show. That's their last show, too. So for anybody yeah. that's in Texas, like ever? Thumbscrew. Yeah, they're they're calling. Oh, shit. Yeah, they got I back together. That. They re-released. They did that stuff with Wax Vessel. They played like two shows, and then they decided that the the this is it. So I'm sure we'll hear the whole story later, but yeah. <laughs> fuck. well, fuck, that's awesome. Well, not yeah. awesome, but it's cool. We get to see it. Shit. Yeah, that's going to be a sick show. Heck yeah, man. Yeah, sure. So what um, with this tour coming up, what is a set list going to look like for the eager people wanting to know? Are you guys going to be playing some some new, some classics, maybe a little mix mash, or you just, it's just going to be like you guys are covering Eiffel 65 all night. Oh, God, there's just way too many songs on this fucking set list. <laughs> we're literally, we're <laughs> literally playing 22 songs spanning all eras of See You Next Tuesday. Uh, we got like a, a block towards the end ish where we just bang out like six intervals tracks in a row, and it's fucking awesome. <laughs> so hard. <laughs> Fox so and I are like constantly dying. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, don't start. Don't start. <laughs> <laughs> we always constantly watch each other just to, you know, you good? Okay. Are you good? No, I'm not. <laughs> like, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. <laughs> no, we're not. I just get in the zone, man. Can't help it. I got so much going on. I bring like this little synth noisemaker thing so we can have some some filler and stuff, keep the show energetic, you know. Plus it gives yeah. us some opportunity to breathe in between songs. <laughs> yeah. yeah Fox what... doesn't have to talk the whole time. <laughs> yeah, which is awesome. It's probably healthy, you know, give yourself a a chance to drink some water, breathe some air. Exactly. I hear air is important. Yeah, kind of. Sometimes. Kind of, sort of. It's pretty cool. Like, when you have a cold and you can't breathe very great, like when you're eating and you have to... Man, that's annoying for sure. I get you. (laughs) Gotta stay healthy on the road, man. (laughs) Oh, we don't. Yeah, of course, all the, all it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard. It's hard to when your options are gas station food and fast food. Yeah, and everything else is so much fucking money. We're playing a couple pizza places, um, so that's nice. <laughs> that's great. The, <laughs> who doesn't like pizza? Asshole. <laughs> 
not fans. They have to be fan. They're not fans of CNX Tuesday if they don't like pizza. Correct. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if if any of our fans don't like pizza, please delete everything about us from your life. <laughs> Real life. He means it. Or he, he... or start liking pizza because you know. <laughs> or just start liking pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you the option. In any form, pizza rolls are okay. Pretty yeah, much. Like you can yeah, make yeah, it inside out. It's still title. great. Pizza is a very versatile food, for sure. It, it comes in. It comes in. It it comes in through like everything. It's like you could be drunk, you could be uh, cold, you could be sick. It doesn't matter. The pizza tastes delicious. And you know, I honestly, just ate a whole there... pizza before we started this. <laughs> <laughs> We're revealing honestly, it. Like it's not. It's it's still relatively affordable too like as far as like the inflation and cost of all the fast foods and stuff like chicken wings which are just like yeah god damn so much money but yeah i mean you can still get a pizza for under 10 bucks that's cool yeah, sure. yeah. most most places it's pretty affordable they got good meal deals you can walk away with you know with a drink too and you can you try to make it until dinner time <laughs> So, that was um, the one thing that I was bummed out that we didn't do when we were in New York. We played at St. Vitus. Like I thought there would be like pizza on every corner ever. We were in Brooklyn. And, <laughs> yeah, I know, we but we Manhattan. didn't. I was like, yeah. "Where's the pizza?" <laughs> Instead, we got yeah, lobster was, rolls. Yeah, we. I got a lobster <laughs> roll, which is funny because I got it Connecticut style, <laughs> but it was delicious. It better be. I love lobster. Yum. <laughs> you have any uh special select lobster recipes for the viewing audience? Me personally, he just goes to red lobster. <laughs> <laughs> That's the recipe. Honestly, I mean, the only lobster. the only way that I if I were to buy a lobster and cook it at my house, the only time I do it is on a charcoal grill. That's about the only way I I I cook it and can nail it. I've tried boiling them a couple times. And I feel like I always do it too long, <laughs> but uh, yeah. But I'll eat the shit out of it. I, I'm a big fan of uh, like the crab boils, you know, where they they put the big fucking bag and give you an apron and like utensils that you wouldn't use for anything except for digging shit out of their bug shells. Yeah, delicious bug shells. Yum. It was great. I've with always butter. wanted to. I've always wanted to go to like an authentic crawfish boil because i've never had it and i feel like i would so probably good. love it it's so good sick every time we played new orleans <laughs> meeting crawfish that, that, whatever that crawfish place was like a block away from fucking whatever their venue we used to play oh, we got man. sick every fucking time <laughs> and their and their golden corrals had crawfish yeah Ugh. oh my Ugh. god i've never i never corral used to be our our day off treat to ourselves. Oh yeah, <laughs> we, dude, it was that's like the only thing we ate that day, and we'd just sit there and eat for fucking hours, and then go lay yeah. in the van for a couple hours. <laughs> Every day <laughs> off, we used to do that. So full. <laughs> yeah, just feel like fucking dog shit for hours. <laughs> but you it's were so full. worth it. Yeah, so super worth. full. Oh my god, especially in New Orleans. If anybody has not gone to a Golden Corral in New Orleans. Or haven't you know? If you get to New Orleans, go to Golden Corral. Dude, so I'm many never crawfish. Never recommend going to Golden Corral to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't. I don't endorse her, her, people hurting themselves like that. <laughs> All you can eat buffets, man. They're uh, they're an acquired That's... taste for sure. America, America. yeah. I th I yeah. think that is a very smart hack though in, in trying to uh spend less on the road cuz you mean Yeah. You yeah. sit at a buffet for like 6 hours, you know, you took care of two meals right there. You'll be fine and you can have Yeah, you we can probably literally stayed there for like 2-3 hours anytime we went. Yeah. Just we just we let would it digest a little bit, then start yeah. counting more food. Another place we would fuck up some CCs. CCs. Oh, we used to fuck that uh, shit up. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking uh, buffalo chicken pizza they used to oh, have. There it is. Oh, oh my god! Like spiral Ooh. of buffalo sauce. Like Do you guys have any up there in oven? Michigan? No, dude. But there. Is there? Yeah. What? I'm gonna check. Oh shit. I can't. 
Like, oh, I'm gonna check out my computer. <laughs> yeah, I got a computer. I'll check. I was. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, they closed uh, all of the ones here, but uh, when we went to uh, Gatlinburg, they had one down there, and I about shit. I was like, "There's no." Oh way. hell yeah! Whoa, there is a sea season Lansing. Holy shit! Yeah, yeah. looks like there's two of them. Or no, that's a Fazoli. That's crazy. You guys have a Fazoli still too. That's Sorry, insane. Ryan. <laughs> this is, no, yeah. this is great. I, I don't think I've ever had people like make dinner plans for CC's Pizza <laughs> on a podcast. Before. How long have we been talking about food now? <laughs> Everybody yeah. watching or listening to this is really fucking stoked that they're fucking chose to spend their free time listening to us talking about food. <laughs> If anything, I, we unlocked oh, something man. in their brain to remember CC's. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many endorsement deals, then like you guys could get good brand recognition from this podcast alone. Like just this band Hell will yeah. do for free CC's pizza. Imagine what they will do. <laughs> Drew got take... like a uh, discount at Hungry Howie's because he thanked them in uh, the Parasite yeah, liner. In notes. Parasite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you go to liner notes, it says um Euclid Road, Hungry Howies. I took it into the Hungry Howies and showed the store manager. She gave me free medium pizza for a year. That's like what's I got. Up. I got like one a week for a year. That's what's yeah. up. <laughs> yeah. Didn't reap any of those benefits? I probably did actually. Yeah. This is like genius <laughs> level, like brand marketing from like the old school days, man. You just you'd be able to do stuff that can benefit mm -hmm. you like free pizza for a year. Like that's a cheat code. So bands <laughs> invest in your liner notes, bring back the CD. <laughs> yeah, yep. exactly. <laughs> I think distractions. Didn't we think pizza and burritos or just Mexican no, trashy food. seafood? Oh yeah, that's right. I think trashy seafood. Um, God, long John Silver. Yeah. We, we think a bunch of random shit in the distractions. one. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing at Long John Silver's? <laughs> <laughs> That's Drew's favorite restaurant. You're the one That's keeping them in business, dude. Fish yeah, dude. Oh, well, dude yeah. Yeah. I still have That's that what I gave him for playing Christmas. guitar walking out the door. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I, I'm not. I would be lying if I said I didn't eat at Long John Silver's regularly. <laughs> I 100% do. Also, there's a Baskin Robbins next door to mine. So right, it's I'll like right I can get fried fish and ice cream in the same plaza. Yep. Oh my God. It's amazing. And yeah. uh, what was it? Little Caesars. Uh, yeah. There's sure. Little Caesars and a weed shop right there, too. It's pretty great. You guys got legal weed in Arizona, right? Yeah, we got legal weed, man. I, yeah, you've man, had it longer than us. I think, anyway. I think. Oh, sick. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. Oh, I'll leave it on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm a, uh, I don't know if the hair was a dead giveaway, but yeah, um, I enjoy. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, look at Fox's head. <laughs> look at mine. <laughs> I, oh, wait, it didn't, I it, I'm just I'm just saying it doesn't matter. You just look at the hair real quick, bald, long hair, you know what's up. <laughs> <laughs> but um did you guys mind? I I know that uh before we did this interview, I uh shared on Facebook, hey, ask questions. I was gonna go look at those real quick and see if we can get some questions for you guys. Yeah, do it up sure. for sure. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, probably probably good to talk about other stuff than food. You know, yeah. guys, please continue talking about it because it's going to take me a second to swap between screens. <laughs> I'm looking for this Long John Silver's Drew picture right now. <laughs> that was so funny. That's where I got Drew's Christmas present for uh, for him this year. Well, I couldn't find one, uh, a Long John Silver's gift card, so I just got him like a like a normal gig, like Visa like, gift like card. A visa? Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like just eat wherever you want. <laughs> I saw it at the store and I was like, this this is it. Like I have to oh my God. like I look at this picture of Rick. <laughs> I can't I see it's can't blurry. See it. Oh no. <laughs> Your background's too blurred. Here we go. There we go. Yeah. What's going on? Okay. This is amazing. 
Oh, look at that happy baby. We were shooting the video. Oh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. That, that day was really hot. All right. So I have questions, and if you guys have answers, we'll try to figure that out. Let's right. go. Let's try it. All right. So to keep it on food, I guess, Harry A. Pomeroy the fourth <laughs> asks, drums or flats? <laughs> Oh fuck! Flats yeah. all the way. What? Yes. Dude, what? What or what? I don't know. Wings. I don't know, man. I I I actually I like them both. It for different reasons, but I prefer like a good like if I'm gonna get a six piece at beat ups, like I want three and three. Give me the mix up. Quality. Yeah. All wings are beautiful. I want to know like Fox's wings, answer yeah. right now, and he's probably drums say, or drums or flats. Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. for chicken wings, the one where like you the split two, the leg. Oh, the, oh, the okay. Bones. I see. Um, that shows how much I fucking eat wings. Um, <laughs> but I get, I guess, uh, I guess flats. I prefer that. Yeah, just all like right. strip them in my mouth. Yeah. Great question, Harry. Um, Eric, thanks, Blake, Harry. Pat. Thanks, Harry. Eric Blake asks, ask them if we are getting any vinyl reissues of the older stuff and when they are doing a West Coast tour so I can see Dem Boys again. Um, yeah, I mean, Warner <laughs> Brothers owns the license to our first two records, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, as far as doing West Coast, um. Maybe I mean, someday. it's uh, it's it's somewhere we want to go. It's just a matter of working out our life situations, you know. You know, we all we all have adult jobs and families and stuff, and they're laughing at stuff. It's I'm laughing at this. <laughs> that stupid <laughs> ring light. That fucking picture you made. <laughs> yeah. This is art. <laughs> Drew walking out of a Long John Silver's playing guitar. <laughs> <laughs> totally not like, photoshopped whatsoever the door says closed for good <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I never realized Drew put him out of business <laughs> oh man that's too funny All right, I can oh, I'm sorry it's delicious it's the <laughs> Yo, um, also, I would like to take this opportunity to say if anybody does want to eat some wings with us while we're on this cool tour, we are way down for that type of thing. Wing tour, wing tour, wing tour. <laughs> yeah. I took two oh, weeks yeah. off from work and all I got with these lousy flats. <laughs> <laughs> they must have succulent flats, man. I've never heard them called that before. Flat, really? Flat? Yeah. What did you call huh. them? Wings. Like wing you got mangy. legs. Thighs. What do you call the other piece then? That's the other part of the wing. Isn't, isn't that a leg? No. It is. That's like it is it's a like KFC. two parts of a wing. Well, there's wow. three technically. There's the drum, and then there's the part with the two bones, and then there's the fucking. I, I've heard. I've heard the drum <laughs> part, but I've never heard flat. Yeah, they're <laughs> flat. I guess I'm just not experienced in the, the, the flipper. flipper. You know, when you get the whole wings, like when you go to Hooters, you know they got the whole ones, they got the flipper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm Fox afraid. has literally got boneless wings every time he's eight wings here. <laughs> That's true, yeah. he's a. am a bone-in traditional type of guy for sure. I have to be in a mood for bone-in. <laughs> yeah, it work for sure. I get that. <laughs> Dirty old man joke. Uh, this is great. This is amazing. All right, so uh, what's what? that? I said, did my dad make a joke in here? Oh yeah, <laughs> he's right over Off here. Fox, Nick, Nick Barker. <laughs> so our next Nick Barker question, Jimmy's dad. <laughs> yes. G there we go. So <laughs> Will William Lowry. Ask what's their fav what's your favorite place to play or favorite show that you've played in the past? I guess you can in each answer past? this. Jesus. It's a broad question. 
Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Uh, yeah. If I'm if I may. You may absolutely. Okay, sweet. Uh my favorite show uh since I've been in this band uh was the From a Second Story Window reunion show in Youngstown. Mm -hmm. Because was a, it was huh? That was a neat show. It was uh for a few reasons. Uh one, it was with literally all our friends. And two, it was the biggest show that we've played since we've been back as a band. Not true. Are you sure? Yeah, Whoa. Bleeding Through Snow had double the people. Oh, okay. But still. I'll give you that. Yeah. <laughs> Everything that you show was wrong. just really awesome. <laughs> still really awesome. Yeah. That's mine. Um, my favorite, my favorite show off the top of my head would have to say would be Monterey, Mexico, because, uh, we played there, we played there before intervals was out and we decided to play dedication to a new era and everyone fucking sang along to it. And that's how we found out that intervals was leaked on the internet. <laughs> Wait, that was, we found out in Europe that it got leaked because we would trigger the bloodshed. Shit. They're the ones that I'm told thinking, us it got I'm leaked. I'm thinking of a different show. Yeah. Must have been that show then. I thought it was in Mexico. No. Well, you did say that in Mexico... You're they wrong, did... too. <laughs> I am, too. Yeah. All right. Well, one of those shows... I don't know. Mexico in general was fucking awesome, though, I guess. Dude, the Mexico I don't know, City show was fucking insane. That was absolutely one of the craziest insane. shows we've ever played. Yeah, maybe that's the one I'm thinking of. That one was fucking nuts. They got man. shut down by the fucking cops, and then they paid off the cops to let it keep going. Yep. Didn't you really say cool. there was some like old cell phone footage from that show, like on the internet somewhere? It's on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Like, yes. there's some really so shitty footage people. of that show. It was fucking outrageous, fucking man. Insane, like. Probably like double capacity, or what double or double of what capacity should have been. It was just it like was shoulder crazy. to shoulder, like crammed in there with kids just fucking going insane. Yeah, dude. We played a we played a handful of house shows over the years that were probably some of the fucking coolest shows we ever played. Before uh, Fox was in the band, when Rick was back in the band, um, we played this kitchen. In Iowa City, Iowa. And I mean, it was, you know, a fucking kitchen. And people were standing on top of, like, the stove and stuff to just be in this <laughs> room with us playing. And then uh, I remember, like, the slaughter. Did you ever, in Flesh and Blood, did you ever play the slaughterhouse? Uh, Sounds incredibly named... familiar. But it was it's Monique, in Pittsburgh. Jeremy's house in Pittsburgh. It was that basement. There was, like, a um, an outdoor entrance. Or you oh, actually might have played there. You might have played there with us. I don't know. No, by the time you got in the band, we pretty much did only cool shows. And we played we played some house shows together, didn't we? I we don't did, know, man. Uh, pot. When we were on tour with who were we with when we were on tour with Rose Funeral? Was it just hmm. us and Rose Funeral? Uh Somebody else was on that tour, I feel like. Yeah. Anyway, one of the shows know. got canceled and we ended up playing a house show somewhere in California. And it hmm. was fucking crazy. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. yeah people were Shit, jumping up that. like I that remember... stair, uh, stairway or whatever. Yeah, like, and that's why that's I and... met Johnny, right? Johnny was at oh. that show. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fuck, anyway. what show... That was some hardcore band. It was awesome. I remember that show. I don't know, man. We played some cool shows. That one's tough. <laughs> yeah. the, uh, good questions always lead to multiple good answers. Yeah. That's true. Uh, <clears throat> it was uh, Full Blown Chaos uh, and Rose Funeral. There we go. There full go. Blown dropped yeah. off the tour like a couple days later. Or like yeah. after Graves, the tour began. Graves, yeah, Graves of Valor too. When we ended up touring with Full Blown Chaos later on in our career, they were fucking awesome to tour with. Those guys 
were super cool. Yeah. Awesome. Another ferret band, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Full blown nice. cholesterol. Me. <laughs> I remember when they announced that tour, someone on Lam- like everyone on Lamb Goat kept calling them full blown cholesterol. And I was just like, that's too fucking funny. <laughs> Ray Ray lost a bunch of weight. Singer for him, man. Yeah. I haven't nice. seen that guy in so long. Man. All right, Fox, what's your favorite show? Uh, as far as like since we've been back together, it, it's probably a toss up between the From a Second Story reunion show and St. Vitus. Yeah. Uh, St. Vitus show was fucking insane. Uh, yeah. as far as back in the day, my do- my memory is complete dog shit. Um, that Mexico City show was fucking amazing. That whole like Haiti Eternal tour was fucking amazing. The whole yeah, Redcore yeah. tour was amazing. The whole Job for a Cowboy tour was amazing. The whole Suicide <laughs> Silence tour was amazing. We did the short run with like from a second. Actually, this this was probably my favorite tour back then. We did uh. It was us from a second story window, nights like these, and Tony Danza, and oh, yeah. on half the tour, Unearth uh, headlined, and the other half, Devil Wears Prada headlined. Yeah, uh, but the fact that you know us from a second story window, nights like these, and Tony Danza were you know hanging out for like a fucking week or two yeah. was fucking amazing, and they were like all super good homies. So like and- any of those shows, like I remember the. The uh, Richmond, Virginia show at Alley Cat was fucking oh, yeah, bonkers and unearth headline that show, and it was insane, fucking crazy. And then we did like six weeks with From a Second Story Window, Life in August Your Way, Burns and yeah. August Burns Red. That tour was yeah. awkward. <laughs> yeah. Chasing victory, yeah. That was uh, victory, the last. Yeah. Life in your way. Life in your way was a pleasure to watch every night, man. That band's so goddamn good. Yeah, life in your way and chasing victory. Like they're not nothing like us at all. But like those were some of the coolest dudes, and their their fucking music was so good. Like they <laughs> and they nailed it. Like they were so yeah. fucking amazing every night. That was the last time I ever saw you guys play. Was okay. that tomorrow? Uh, you guys came here to Columbus and played this place called Little Brothers, and there yeah. was like a, a it was a huge like not like huge stage as in like size wise, but like height wise from the crowd. Like if I was to stand, like it was like the stage started here on my face. Like you guys were <laughs> up really high, so it was weird <laughs> to see, but it was sick. It was a great show. Brian keeps spinning. Yep. Because I keep I, my phone, uh, like look at questions. Sorry. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Oh, I thought it was the weed. Oh yeah, the weed will do that too. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. So okay. next question is from Gabe Duet. He asks, uh, ask him when they're gonna come out to Arizona so I can shower them with love. Uh Arizona. We do have same answer to West requests. Coast. Yeah, we 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 want to. We absolutely after this big tour, you know, if we can manage another tour, it's going to be West Coast. I mean, that's that's the other part of the the country that we got to hit. So, I mean, it's you're fucking far, dude. (laughs) Sorry. Unfortunately, we just don't have the capability. You know, we we tour in like not a fucking passenger van, you know, like normal tour, you know, we do the SUV and a trailer. Yeah, it's like we're all crammed in this tiny vehicle. Like, it doesn't make sense for us to buy a van when we don't play shows like crazy anymore. So us trying to drive out there, plus, like, these two, you know, like, Rick and I can feasibly take the time off to do touring, but it would hurt us financially because we're both tattooers, but I'm sure we could figure it out. But with these two, you know, like, they have normal adult jobs where it's hard to take an extended amount of time off for us to have to drive all the way to you yeah. know the west coast and back and it, it's it's just not realistic for us a lot, unfortunately as much as we would yeah. absolutely fucking love to you know like but it, it's yeah it'll happen it'll happen eventually like it's on the docket but you know it we got to get through this big tour first and see where we're sitting for life you know what i mean like yeah it just depends, you know. It's it's tough being a torn band, and it's tough being a band that plays 
weird unique music you know what i mean like yeah. we're not we're not a huge band so going out on tour is not making thousands of dollars either you know like yeah. we're, we're we're making a sacrifice to do something fun and you know so it'll it'll happen though you know yeah, yeah hopefully <laughs> gotta stoke the flames of hope you know exactly yeah, yeah. it'll happen yeah yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, see, so uh, <laughs> it's a baby, Shane. Yeah, Shane. <laughs> William Lowry has a, another question. He says, "When's the next album gonna drop?" Ooh. Ooh. We just we dropped just it. Out. Like, <laughs> I, 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 I said here. the same thing. I said the same thing. <laughs> what do you fucking want from us? Well, I'll, like I'll, in uh, the same year. <laughs> I'll spoil this. How's this sound? On uh, April 5th, which I don't know if this podcast will even be out by then, but uh, the Wax Vessel stuff, the god-awful Sonic history will be on all streaming platforms Friday uh, for Bandcamp Friday. There you October, go. Uh, April 5th. So New is new is new you know it's new if, if you haven't heard it you don't have a copy of it it's new to you yeah it's it's absolutely awful it's before fox was on it so he has no reason to be embarrassed by I can't it can't wait for more people to tell me they like better or bear more <laughs> <laughs> be like well he's not on as much stuff as me so get over it <laughs> right. awesome so let's see next fan question from colin braze I feel like this is probably like a run of the mill question, but it'd be cool to know why they like disappeared off the face of the planet and then what made them decide to come back. Even if the answer is just having families, because it seems like there's a resurgence of these type of bands like Sawtooth Grin, Heavy Heavy Lolo. Uh, these bands are deciding to drop stuff out of nowhere. So I'm just curious if there's anything behind that or people are just having fr free time again. You want me to do it or you want to, Drew? <laughs> I can. Um, in a in a nutshell, um, we got burned the fuck out. You know, two thousand seven, two thousand eight, in two thousand nine, coming into two thousand ten. Fox, me, Travis. Well, Travis had quit by then. We had Cooter who was ready to quit, and Andy had just. You know, we had we parted ways with Andy. We got Jake. You know, we just we were burnt out. We're going through members. Our, our bank account was burned out too. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I was just got done saying that we're, we're a, a, a genre or subgenre or mixture of subgenres of music that's not, we're not, you know, we're not the most popular metal band by any means. And we get that, but we're doing what we like. And we're having fun with it. But yeah, I mean, we just, we got burned out. So we, we, we went on hiatus. Technically, in 2015 or 16, we played a show. 15, uh, yeah. So don't don't call it a fest. fest. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. That was our first Which we show got, back. Yeah, we got roped in because I Hate God was going to play. But then the day before, they dropped off. So I didn't even end up get to see them. So we got together for no reason. But... uh. <laughs> And then a couple years later, we did like this beer and brutal fest in Pittsburgh. Um, yes, yeah, so, I mean, we were sort of active and stuff, but uh, it wasn't until after COVID. Um, you know, I uh, I got into some some shit and I got out of some shit. And, and uh, writing that record was uh, a scapegoat for me. So. It it my it was my actual distraction, so that's why we got back into it. Is I just I got sober again, and yeah, I'm California sober. Just so. <laughs> not wrong with that. Yeah, <laughs> I think though, like to add to like the question, like with these bands coming back, y'all coming back. I think you know back then it was only like a handful of bands that were sounding like that. I would say possibly now that the kind of spectrum of sounds that you guys dabble with. There's a lot more of that and more of an audience that caters to that. Cause I don't think like, you know, see space cowboy body snatcher frontier, like these bands, you know, you, they weren't around 10, 15 years ago. And I think there's more of a cohabitation, like of a scene for it. And that's like specific, like intense experimental metal. 
I hope so. And we'll we'll find out next month when we hit the road. (laughs) (laughs) Man, I I still want to do like a show, like a battle set with CU Space Cowboy. Yeah, it'd be just because it'd be fun for the flyer to make. I have, I have the. (laughs) I have the funniest CU Space Cowboy story ever. And this recently just happened. So a few months ago, we just did a little run with Meth. Uh, it was for their CD release for Shame, which anybody listening, go listen to Meth and their new record, go Shame. It's fucking, fucking it. awesome. Fuck yeah. it's so good. Anyway, um, we did this little three-day run. It was us, them, and uh, Def Club. And... Uh, we originally were going to just do two days with them and they ended up kind of extending the tour and we ended up tossing on a, a, um, a date in Canada. Right. And, uh, our, I reached out to our booking agent was like, Hey, can you set up this Sunday for a show? We're going to try to hit London. Uh, cause it's just over the border, uh, London, Ontario. Anyway, long story short, um, Seb emails me and is like, Hey, what's going on with this, uh, show? We were hoping to get it booked. And my booking agent replies to this thread and is like, yeah, I'm waiting for um, his offer. He was mixing you up with another band. So I replied and said, let me guess, see you space cowboy. If that's the case, ask for 12 grand. (laughs) And he quickly replied was, yep, that was the band he thought you were. (laughs) Suffice it to say, get the fucking show. (laughs) <laughs> we ended up playing in kitchener instead <laughs> which was sick and that yeah, footage cool. is online on youtube yeah um, check it out <clears throat> i really least... watched it yeah oh it's so cool love it anyway sorry anyway. Yeah. yeah 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 anyway anyway i believe that was let me uh because i know you guys shared it yeah, I'm gonna go look on your guys's page. I was I know gonna you say I was on it. our page. There's four questions on ours. Ooh, ooh, wow. we're really popular. Whoa! All right, so uh, bastards nice prim- put up with this. <laughs> <laughs> Bastard premonition tapes asks. Just curious. Eight dead, nine if you count the fetus. Who does guest vocals? Sounds like the dude from Life Once Lost. Just Fox. Oh, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> It's just me. It's just Foxy Fox. <laughs> there are I never heard versions. that question either. <laughs> there are there are two versions of that song though. That if you listen to the summer sampler slash god awful sonic history, that's Bear. If you listen to Parasite, that's Fox. Wow. So, yeah. Hope that clears it up for bastard premonition tapes. Yeah, uh, a so. Fox once lost. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Uh, cool. Gabe DeWitt asks again. I am once again asking you to chore out west so I can shower you all with love. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, not necessarily a question. A Gabe, if you co- if we if we announce a West Coast tour, we'll put you on the guest list right now. <laughs> That's that, my Gabe? promise. That's my promise to Gabe. Just a or matter of time. If I out to any of our shows out here, we will put you on the guest list. Yeah, we will. 100% that's that's do a little that. bit more likely in the near future. <laughs> Get on it. Kill. Get on it, Gabe. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Chase Coleman asks favorite city, favorite venue to play in? I don't know. Vitus was pretty cool. Vitus was sick. I, I think lately for me, it's been. Uh, pyramid scheme in Grand Rapids. Their only downside there is that there's the green room is not is like a it is a closet for the most part. Yeah, yeah. like it's but besides your that, it's fucking every aspect of it is amazing. The venue is very yeah. cool. The yeah, the parking situation sounds amazing. Is like, it sounds great. Yeah, yeah, that place is pretty sweet. Vitus was fucking awesome though, man. Vitus, Just... but no longer exists. Shut down. Yep, that no. sucks. Oh, is it official now? Yeah. For now, oh. I mean, I haven't heard yeah. anything about they it. They might reopen somewhere sure. else, but at the moment, gone. Yeah. I know that Sumac had a tour go through New York, and they were supposed to play there, and they played at some place called the TVI. So that hmm. 
maybe that's going to take the overflow of like yeah. things that should have been at Vitus or something like that. There's that, but... there's that Trans Pesos place too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think what as far that? as like favorite venues. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, I was just, uh, that place that Drew was talking about, well, that was a, that was a fest that Sawtooth played at that place, right? Uh, Math Corn Dex was there. That's what it was. Okay. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Go ahead, Fox. Oh, I was just going to say my favorite venue from like back in the day was probably White Rabbit in San Antonio. Oh, hell yeah. That place, that place was awesome. fucking awesome. It was yeah. so good. Every time we went there, it was just a fucking party. Like, it was amazing. Yeah. Really? It was like Kids a were compound. so stoked. It was like a compound of a venue, too. Like, it was indoor, outdoor. They had that little side stage. What about that place in uh, Houston was sick, too? Java Jazz or something like that? I don't remember. Or it was like, there was like an outside section. It was in like a strip mall. Ah oh, man, I swear it was—I swear it was Java Jazz. We played there on the Job for a Cowboy tour, for sure. That was 2007, bro. Was it the uh -huh. Long John Silver's yeah. venue? <laughs> <laughs> and as you can see, they're closed for good since Drew went in there. Yeah. <laughs> Not the one by my house. I think uh, for me. Um, Definitely, uh, Vitus was a bucket list place for me because I've, um, like religiously, before we even got to meet him as a person, um, there's a guy named Frank who records a uh, video for St. Vitus shows, and he recorded our set for us and uh, every band set that night, and he always puts them up on his YouTube page. And I've been watching his YouTube page unknowingly knowing it was him like <laughs> for years. And I was like, oh, God, dude, what's up? And he was super cool. Uh, so that was definitely like bucket list for me. I didn't realize how small that it was because it seems really big on camera. But the venue is like really small. Um, and then the other place that I really enjoyed was when we played with Meth in Chicago um, at Talia Hall. Just kind of how cool. that place was set up for that show specifically. Um, they have a, it's kind of like a big th uh, theater. There's like a, a upstairs with uh, seating. And then the floor was totally open and there was a huge stage, but we didn't play on the stage. We played on like a half a foot riser on the floor and everybody was like circled around us, which I thought was super cool. Oh that's yeah. Awesome. That's awesome, dude. That was we had awesome. a circle pit around the stage. <laughs> <laughs> that was fucking that was unreal for sure. That was cool. See. I think our last fan question, Kevin Champagne asks, are you ever Pardon? coming back to Canada? And I'm sure that's like the West Coast. <laughs> yeah, that dude uh, has uh, bought some merch from us and stuff. I had to like figure out how to ship to Canada for him. He lives out like Alberta or something. We want to. There's this band over there um, from Alberta called Satanic Tico. I don't know if you know those dudes, Ryan. Not, fam not familiar, but uh, I'm sure... If y'all say they're good, they better be good. Yeah, they're this death metal band. The dude's, uh, uh, the singer Dom is this TikToker, like huge, huge, huge fucking following on TikTok. It's crazy. But you and your um, TikTok connections, I know, right? <laughs> but uh, yeah, they were asking us about coming out there. There's a bunch of sick fucking bands out that way too, man. Um, so. I don't know. I just want to go hang yeah. with Terry from Food Bar. Hell yes. <laughs> I remember you letting me watch that movie. So good. So good. <laughs> Terry follows me on Instagram. We're friends. Yeah. Hell yeah. You're also friends with Billy Strings. Not, not a surprise. Got to make those connections. That guerrilla marketing, it never dies. You know, he was having top yeah. eight ideas. It's you got to you got to just keep evolving and adapting to your uh, you. ever evolving scene scenery. <laughs> exactly. 
Hell yeah, guys. Um, so I guess I, I, I usually ask this question at the beginning, but I, I, I guess I uh, overlooked it. But y'all obviously play your certain instruments for the band. I, how did you guys get into like playing your instruments or your vocals? You know. <laughs> uh, well, as far as vocals, um, I just kind of fell into it with my band prior or the band I was involved with prior to Scenic Tuesday. Um, it, was, it was like I, well, my my first band I actually played bass in, uh, which was a Weezer cover band. <laughs> and then uh, and then some friends of mine ended up forming a, like a metal band, which I was like way more into at the time. And they asked if they already had a vocalist, but, you know, I went to a practice and they asked me if I wanted to try too. So we ended up having like two, it was super new metal, um, but we had two vocalists and I, I just kind of like, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just yelling, you know, but over time kind of figured out what I was doing and that band turned into Flesh and Blood Robot eventually. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, it, it, it just took time, but it, it's really just like, oh, you need a singer? I'll do it, you know? type of thing it's not like i had to fucking i didn't like take lessons or anything <laughs> but yeah it, i just fell into it really awesome so drew jimmy uh, you guys who yeah. wants to go next um i did i worked at a uh like a mom and pop guitar shop uh when i was like 20 and uh that's when i picked up a guitar for the first time and uh, I basically just sat there and practiced sweet picking and shit for like fucking ever. My dogs were barking. I apologize. Not my feet, my actual dogs. <laughs> oh, he is a mailman, so his feet would be hurting. <laughs> it's confusing in a household with three dogs it's I, 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 I think you got three. pretty good vocal isolation on your mic i can't hear no dogs so you're oh, good. okay yeah it was we distracting me but you know i smoked pot so uh yeah man i just fucking i practiced the shit out of guitar um the guitar shop i worked at had a couple instructors that worked there including like this guy that was a total savant and um you know just picked up shit there you know and eventually i you know found bands that inspired me and i started playing panic chords and boom see you next tuesday is boring <laughs> panic chords paid the way man they really did you know I, I i like i like calling them panic chords i think there's uh there's other names that people give it like dissonance or something like that but yeah. Trash. Panic chord just kind of works for me. <laughs> yeah, it's it's I've I've been seeing that one's uh, coming around a lot lately. It just it just makes sense. For yeah, sure. I I don't think anything else works. That's like you can't you know they're not called the psycho chords or nothing like that. Yeah. You know, it just everything else sounds corny, <laughs> but panic chords works for some reason. Hell yeah, fucking thanks. Uh, what's that shitty van that uh dun dun me. <laughs> Godsmack. <laughs> that was my first. Ex that was my. That was that right there is how I learned to play a panic chord. Was that fucking song? I was like, what is that you sound? Fucking. Don't fucking go away. <laughs> what song? What song is that, Jimmy? It's called whatever, dude. Get it right. Come on. <laughs> Get it right or pay the price. God, God smack fucking go over. <laughs> dude i've seen god smack so many times because they were always on tour with bands i wanted to see like fucking like fear factory or static x and shit like yeah. back in the day and i'm like oh i gotta sit through fucking god smack again. God damn it. <laughs> i managed yeah. to skate by and never see god smack live I saw just, Fear just, Factory with Slipknot probably three different times, though. They fucking toured together all the time. That's what's up. Yeah, dude. Good times. 
Is that would you say that's like one of the be like one of the best tours you've ever seen? Me? Oh shit, man, that's tough. I don't know, man. Like uh I saw Soulfly, Incubus, System of a Down, and Snot. James Lynn Strait was still alive. And like I, you know, obviously I'm 41 and I'm it's a small town in America, so I grew up New Metal as fuck. So like yeah. that was like the pinnacle show for me. And to boot, and mind you, like I smoked weed the whole my whole life, you know. And uh I'm sitting there fucking smoking weed, waiting for Soulfly to come on, and I get I never heard, I didn't hear of any of the three bands except for Soulfly. So like opening the show was System of a Down. And then Incubus comes out and plays, and it was science just came out. They played Ooh. the they played the secret song. That's crazy. They played the secret song. Yeah, it was fucking nuts. And then uh Snot comes out, and that I was just like, I fucking shit myself, dude. I like man, seeing that band live was was in, insane. I don't know, I don't know if you're a Snot fan at all, Ryan, but uh yeah and then Soulfly. so i'd have to say and it was at this little state theater with like the moon painted on the ceiling and stuff it was just a cool vibe that was probably one of my probably one of the coolest shows i've been to hell yeah that's cool dude uh jimmy i didn't get your answer for uh how'd you get you into your instrument and i guess i guess oh. my next yeah uh and my and your next question is what is the I, best show I'll, I've ever I'll, seen? I'll segue into that after we get your how'd you get into your instrument, man? Tell us. Uh, all right. <laughs> so for me, uh I actually started out wanting to play guitar. And uh my cousin, who was like a baby compared to me right in age. Oh great, Fox Nightman a fucking story. <laughs> I can hear you still. This is what Jimmy <laughs> looks like playing a guitar. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to play guitar. Uh, my cousin had one, and I told her I would give her five dollars for it. So I did, and <laughs> she was an idiot because she was like five. Uh, Dumbass. Anyway, Dumbass. I uh, <laughs> I I wanted to start playing guitar. I was super heavily into Nirvana as a kid. Um. Nirvana and Soundgarden and Jimi Hendrix and I wanted to play guitar. Uh I just wasn't good at it and also every string on that guitar broke. So um didn't have any strings, didn't know where to go get strings. Uh I lived in small town middle of nowhere America <laughs> just like Drew. Um and then uh a, a cousin of mine who was older uh she played drums in the school band and she had a drum set and we went to visit uh them one day and i just thought it was the coolest thing and she let me sit behind it and she was like you think you can play anything on this i said i don't think so and she put on the beavis and butthead experience cd and <laughs> I listened to like out of no like how far back did i have to go to get that damn thing to talk about <laughs> That's so awesome. uh, and it had uh <laughs> megadeth 99 ways to die on it i thought that song was so cool so good it, it was so good and uh so i like played a lot i like she had these brushes and uh, i was like playing like i was like i think i could probably do this it'd be cool and never gave it a thought much more after that and probably a year went by and she moved away and um I was starting middle school and starting a uh, junior high band and wanted to play drums. And um, my uncle was like, Hey, you're going to need a drum set. Won't you? And I was like, probably. <laughs> and so he gave me hers and that's uh, Drew and I ironically uh, had the same drum set brand, which was called TKO percussion uh we had two different color kits but we had the same brand Mine was uh, blue. And that's, yeah i had a, a sparkly silver one but that's how i started i 
that's where it kind of started. And I really started getting into a lot more um, classic rock stuff. Like I was, I've always been super into Rush and like Led Zeppelin and things like that. So I started learning how to play songs like that. Um, sitting actually in my basement on the couch uh, before I had the drum set and tried to like learn how to play songs. And then I just like started learning how to play like heavier stuff like Metallica and I didn't have a double bass. So I wasn't even playing the bass drum parts right at all. So I was like, you know, learning that way. And then, uh, you know, it all spiraled into more extreme music and got better drum kits throughout life. And yeah, it's really right around like age uh, 12, probably when I started like, uh, getting um you know into it and yeah that's that's kind of how i fell into it and uh no, no one really played the drums where i'm from uh where i grew up and everybody played bass or tried to play creed songs on a guitar that's so that's so Hell weird because yeah. i i started on drums because i was in marching band and then like sixth grade and then on the I wanted to be in a band and there's a bunch of drummers. So I sold my drum kit and bought a bass. And then I started playing bass at like 12. And then I was a bass player until, I, no, I was probably 14. I think I started drums at like 11. And then I was, I played bass until I was like 22. <laughs> yeah. We had That's zero cool. drummers like, or like, no. Nope. Like in my school, there was just a, I went to a very small school and there was just a handful of us who liked metal and actually yeah. wanted to play music. And um, I was the only drummer. There was no one else. And it was so weird. Like, yeah. like the, there were other kids in band with me who played percussion, but none of them had a drum kit. Yeah. And none of them. But it was like they just did it for, yeah, I, I, I play percussion. <laughs> yeah, I play percussion to get an A in a subject, you know, it's like, or, you know, just something extra to do. Yeah. And I took it serious, like, since, like, yeah. day one. Like, I wanted to play the drums. I wanted to play in front of a bunch of people and try not to throw up and you know, <laughs> still have... What you I still, still have that. Uh, yeah, I still have that problem today. <laughs> <laughs> I have anxiety through the roof, and, and uh, you're you're doing a good job, man. Don't worry about it. Hey, thank Aww. you, man. Aww. Thank you. But yeah, that's uh, that's really uh, that's really how it is. It's like uh, no one would play, no one could play drums, or no one had drums, and I ended up jamming with a couple of people that I grew up with, and. We did a uh, the first time that I ever remember actually jamming with people. We had a project for seventh grade, something. We had to make a video, uh, an ad for something. And mm -hmm. this one kid that played guitar was in my group, and my buddy who played bass was in my group. And he was like, "We were like, well, what can we do? Like, what kind of song can we do? Like, do you know anything?" And he was like, the only song I know how to play is Higher from Creed. <laughs> and so <laughs> we made this ad. <laughs> yes. We made this ad. My mom filmed us on our camcorder. And we were like, hey, what's up? We're Creed. And our new album, Human Clay, is out real soon. Here's our hit single, Higher. And we just played a little snippet of it. And, Fucking you know, rules. we just... Dude, it was like the worst thing, but we got an A on it, so that was awesome. Nice job, Jimmy. I have a Thanks. question. Yeah. Can you take us higher? I can. <laughs> take you to the, I can take you to the place where blind men see. <laughs> oh, cool. that's great. That's so good. Drew can organs. literally take us higher right now. Like, <laughs> I am taking that... higher. Or <laughs> out. Taking yourself higher. I think it's like a default state at this point in my life. It's being higher. Yeah. <laughs> and then what was just, your other Just question? me before bedtime. <laughs> Laying in bed. 
So you guys have relapses out, which is kind of like, you know, you got some remixes, you got some features from some nice singles. How do you guys feel about this album now that, you know, it's had like a little marinade time to be out? It's awesome. I, yeah, I, I it. dig it. Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's everything. Actually, it's, it far exceeds anything I expected. That's for fucking sure. Um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was super fun project. And I think it gets the point across that we really are trying to be something different. You know, um, because we are, you know, we're, we're trying, you know, I, I want us to be that, that, that grindcore band. that's not a grindcore band, you know, so is what it is just doing something fun and making some music for us and yeah i we met it. so <laughs> many cool people doing it too you know yeah yeah uh, I, I think it, it, with all these collaborations and stuff it's like a nice little capsule of like a lot of yes. people that are have been killing it or are like are just beginning to kill it and there's mm -hmm. some folks that, that you're helping like kind of extend that branch to like Hey, right. these guys are cool. If you've never heard of them, we have. Maybe you should hear them too. Right, right. And I also love with like Frontier and John Connor was fucking amazing. You know, like yeah. See, uh, I've uh, Drew Frontier and Fox, for so long. Drew and Fox have like known a lot about like the electronic side of of music and in, uh, in that genre because they both enjoy it. And I've never you know taking the time to like sit and listen to stuff like that and uh so this project at first to me seemed a little odd but i was like you know drew's got a really smart brain and he knows what he's doing so <laughs> you know it's gonna turn out great no matter what and uh you know i got to like hear some stuff that i've never heard before because honestly i sit and right here where i am every day and work and i basically listen to classic southern rock and country like all day long like classic <laughs> country and you know i got to hear the like one of the ones that i really really loved and getting to actually sit with him on a podcast one day uh was uh james from black magnet um he like his project is super cool and his remix is one of my favorites that's on oh yeah the album Sounds like Prodigy. I love it. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, this was eye opening to me because I never have, you know, I've never gotten into this type of stuff before. So, you know, uh, it was really cool to kind of open that door to my head. It's like, you know, Drew likes to get experimental with like um, the sounds like when we do on stage, like he's got his cool little beat boot board and does a lot of like <laughs> in between noise. <laughs> And, beat, you know, move, it's, board. yeah and uh it's it's just cool and it, it's it's uh we're branching out to like you know putting that type of stuff like they start like he started with it on you know distractions really even cool. before i was even brought into them so, beat, move, like, board. oh yeah there it is <laughs> um so like you know he's you know been into that type of stuff and fox has been into that type of stuff so it's just really cool that all of these people agreed to collaborate <laughs> with us. And, especially you know, we like, asked... Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, especially like uh, like Kevin Kyle Medina of Body Snatcher be like, dude, I'm so honored to be on a See You Next Tuesday song. And I'm just it's like... Such a sweetheart. Your band is so big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's cool as fuck. Yeah, he's he's, so, a he's such a sweetheart such a nice yeah. guy without a doubt and it was and it was my first appearance with the band as you know an actual the drummer yeah on, on yeah record. he plays drums on three of the tracks he didn't play on distractions nobody did <laughs> it was the phantom drum machine programmers <laughs> played drums i, I but, mean yeah. I think a lot of good things come together on relapses and i think it's awesome seeing that you have like collabs and remixes and stuff like that, because I just don't think that's something I think that's like a little bit of the old school, the OG in you, because you don't really see stuff like that too much nowadays where mm -hmm. people do that kind of stuff. Like, I don't even think we get too many people doing acoustic versions of songs anymore. 
where it's just kind of like you know i think that's more of like a mainstream pop or you know edm right. scene type stuff it's not really something that's incorporated <laughs> in the affiliated core genres at least not in the modern just... <laughs> drew do you remember aeon yeah fuck yes <laughs> they did that so they had aeon was this band that was on the hate eternal misery and so tour. fucking good they're uh, so goddamn good and they have this song called god gives get or god gives head in heaven and uh they did a country r- remix as a secret track on their album <laughs> That's it's sick. one of the funniest fucking remixes I've ever heard in my life. Oh my god, I'm I'm literally trying to find <laughs> I just it. Fucking remember right that now. For, I forget what you just said, but it just totally made me think of that. It's so good, but yeah, oh. I mean, not a lot of people. Uh, one of the reasons why relapses came up, we said this many times before, is because we were talking about Fear Factory a lot, and they had remanufactured, which was a remix of demanufactured. Now, growing up, like I fucking loved remanufactured. And like shit like that came out all the time. Like, you know, like the Spawn soundtrack back in the day was like an electronic artist paired with like, uh, you know, like Corn or Jonathan Davis or, you know, like fucking Silverchair or whatever, you know, like, and all. The, I always thought that shit was cool as fuck, like back in the day. So that's like one of the reasons why this stuff kind of came up. Oh, well, yeah. I don't, I yeah. think. I think movies like like uh, you had to get those like obscure like over the top women in leather like Resident Evil or Underworld or even a little bit yeah. back before that Queen of the Damned like these oh, movies yeah. had Queen to come together to kind of give you those remixes and I I don't think we got that nowadays. No, not at all. Yeah, like when Drew like mentioned that we were doing a remix record and we were talking about Fear Factory, I remembered them doing it, and then uh, the only other like reference point i had for a remix record at all like even off the top of my head was this uh remix which is oceanic from isis and like they Ooh. had all sorts of artists like from mike Patton to justin broderick from godflesh do remixes of the songs off that record so like i had no idea like other than like those two things of like what this could turn into and they're all so different like my friend jonathan uh his child of night project uh did uh the second song that's on relapses and it's like all you want to do is fucking dance like that it's so <laughs> it's so awesome you just want to boogie a funky and... tune i love what he did and then that bass part in the middle man it's this badass fucking synth he put in there yeah and it's like it's got this it's got this boogie to it and then you can hear like drew's solo like in the mid like in the middle of it too it's like oh like who's dancing to this solo right now like oh i am <laughs> you're right check me out <laughs> now i fit in oh yeah all right yeah, I can't yeah, think of too many bands like off the top of my head. Maybe like a good like five. Like I think Wild Dispute, um, Bring Me the Horizon. I wrestled a bear once. I think, yeah, those are the only bands off the top of my head. Oh, and Horse the Band. They would do like you know open themselves oh, yeah. up to do remixes and stuff like that. And it's just like, thank you for continuing to do that, keeping that alive. I think that's just something that, you know, yeah. it's one of those things like a lost art. And I think that's definitely. When it's done well, it's done. It's it's great, and I think you guys did a good job with that and incorporating that. And while also appeasing people, because it's like, oh, if we just release a remix record, you're gonna have people going like, "Where's the new man?" You you know, you put those singles in there, and it all came together. I think it comes, it makes itself like a really good record that stands out in your discog. And Thank you. it, yeah, Thank and you. I think people, you know, it, if you want to hear something outside of the warner brothers catalog definitely go check out relapses hell yeah <laughs> and distractions yeah distraction <laughs> i mean one you can't one can't exist without the other and i won't tell you which order maybe you listen to them both and then you <laughs> there you go that distractions <laughs> is the remix yeah there you go yeah <laughs> you can play they them over top they of each other while remixes. watching i definitely yeah. um <laughs> well making that record thank you by the way ryan it's all it's really nice to hear that positive feedback so thanks but uh um 
you hear a lot of remix records and they do like very soft versions of songs. And that was something I really wanted to avoid too. And I think that that kind of brings something slightly unique to the table. Then having us do a few songs, you know, like having those grindcore 35 second tracks pop in and out of the, the record just like that like it's it kind of worked out really well having those little bursts of intensity of us playing so but yeah i we it was a ton of fun that that whole project and i'm really glad that again with you know i can't say it enough about good fight like they green lighted that shit <laughs> and paid for some cool music videos even you know like yeah it was awesome hell yeah okay well I think we're crossing. We're getting close to the two hour mark here. I, holy time shit! Flies. Really? Yeah, time flies I, know, I was literally. Fun. I was just like, holy shit! It's ten. I'm a mailman. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I I know you guys are a little on the east coast here. It's like you know a little earlier here, so I don't want to keep you up all night. But um, I just I, as always, I like asking um folks, you know, how can they find you on social media? Like, I'm sure there's an at tag or something. Yeah, yeah I want to. You want to mention that link again for anyone that has managed to stay here to the end of this awesome episode. Let them know how oh, to yeah. find you real quick. Uh, yeah, on Instagram and TikTok and YouTube, it's all the letter C, the letter U, and then spell out next Tuesday grind. Uh, so that's C U next Tuesday grind, and then on Facebook you can just search C next Tuesday. I think that just come brings us up. Because you know, that's yeah. how Facebook is. You're on. You're on Spotify. You're everywhere. Anywhere that yeah, music we're on can Spotify, be heard. iTunes, all sorts of stuff. Hell yeah, man! Um, I appreciate you guys for taking the time and and for always having like a very nice candor to your character. I don't think I've ever had a bad experience interacting with See You Next Tuesday, and, and it's been a long time coming. And I'm really glad that Thank this you. episode came together, and I appreciate you guys for giving me the time here on Warp Taste Podcast. Oh um, yeah, dude. Thank uh, you. Yeah, thanks for having us. We really appreciate yeah, I was, it. I was thrilled when you asked us, man. And I, I always appreciate yes, you tossing us in with those big fucking bands. <laughs> yeah, I always believe every little bit counts. And it's like uh I've interviewed plenty of bands and like the, the most one of my, one of the more common phrases I hear is a rising tide raises all ships and I guess like that old MySpace camaraderie where we're all in it together, man. And I, I think that kind of energy and positivity needs to spread a little bit more because there's too much competition and people trying to yeah. think it's a crab bucket where it's just like, we all get somewhere if we all work together and just treat each other Hell a yeah. little pleasant. Hell yeah. I'm down for that. Hell I'm yeah. Sure. I'm all about them positive vibes. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. And working together. I mean, Again, not to beat a dead horse, but that was such a big part of relapses was getting to work with all these other musicians and artists. It was just so fucking humbling. And oh, this, yeah, man. Horse it scratched dead, a lot dude. of Leave itches and checked a lot of boxes. What's that? Nothing. Well, he, had the, he was telling the Long John's uh, breading recipe real quick. Oh. <laughs> he missed it. He missed it. I didn't. Ryan, I can send you that meme if you want to post it with the podcast. Yeah, that'd be great. I think that would. Um, <laughs> I think that's. Uh, what the, the made, meme? Made, it's not I really a meme, a but it's just a funny ass fucking picture. The, the meme really with cool the closed ass, ass Long Johns. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, here we go. That would work. I better right? get. I better get Long John Silver's gift cards out of this. <laughs> I I will you're, find. You already did. Out. I know, but more. It never ends, man. I mean, from the internet. Hungry Howie's Revenge, man. Oh, hell yeah. The duo pepperoni. Let's go. No, I I don't think I've ever been this hungry at the end of an interview before. (laughs) I'm Ryan Rex Rex. Thank you so much for being here today. See you next Tuesday. You guys are always welcome back. I think next time we can probably, like, maybe get some friends of yours together in here and we can just have a good old panel time. Hell yeah, Sweet. let's do it. Sounds good to Oh yeah, guys. But thank you all for watching. This is Warp Chase Podcast. You guys have a great night. Night. Bye.